Hi, this is Graham Brown and this is Escape the Cubicle. There is a Tibetan saying which goes something like this. There is a pigeon that spends all night arranging its nest, so it ends up not getting any sleep. I think this is a good saying to reflect how we as entrepreneurs approach time management. I think most people major in minor things. And the thing is with that, from the outside, they look busy, they look successful. You know, our society glamorizes all that stuff. Here's this person that he or she is always on the go, always busy, busy, going places, doing things, on the phone. How important they must be. But the reality is that activity and results aren't necessarily connected. And I think one of the problems with this is this whole idea of time management. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs have this problem, if not all of this problem. challenge, I should say, is that they don't have enough hours in the day and one of the things they ask early on and maybe they're still asking is how do I sleep less and the reason they ask this is because they haven't worked out any other way of getting more hours out of the day so the only way to do that is to go to their sleeping time and take away something out of their sleeping bank account and use that for their daytime and that really is only a shortcut to stress, uh, demotivation, and poor health long term. And this whole idea of, yeah, you can get by two or three hours of sleep, and that frees up four or five hours for you to work on other stuff. It's just absolutely wrong, because that is going to kill you in the short, in the long term, I should say. And not only will it kill you in the short, in the long term, in the short term, it just leave you burnt out and stressed. Now, 24 hours are democratically assigned to everybody. So how do we make the best use of it? How are some people successful and some people unsuccessful with that time? Well, the key is understanding that time management doesn't work. It's all about prioritization. And working harder doesn't get you there. So in the hours that you have, simply you know, putting your foot down on the pedal or turning up the gas is not going to get any more results because you're working hard already. You're already maxed out. You're probably between 90 and 100% of your capacity. And if you try and work harder, you maybe get tired. Maybe your, you know, your subconscious rebels a little bit and the system breaks. You just can't take it that extra 10%. So how do you sleep more, be less stressed and do more work that makes a difference in the time that everybody else has? The key to this is quitting. And there's this rather macho saying, which is, winners never quit, quitters never win. I think it's complete bullshit. It makes sense in sport. And believe you me, you know, I understand that. I'm an Ironman triathlete and you can't do an Ironman if you quit. You know, this is a 12-hour race. And the last section of that race is a marathon. A 4,000 meter swim, 180k bike, then a marathon. You can't go into that race thinking, yeah, I might just quit. You can't do it. And you will have times during that race, you have dark periods. And I talk about this on my Endurance FM podcast. Plenty of dark periods in which you go into where you want to quit. Despite a year of training, that one day, that one race, your body is telling you, yeah, just quit. And you have to get through it. So you can't complete that race if you're a quitter. However, sport and business are not the same. Sport is a game. Business, however, if you lose at business, you could lose your life savings, your marriage, your health, everything. And that's why sticking out a business or a project and not quitting can be a very bad move if it's the wrong project to be engaged in. So I want to take ownership of that saying that winners never quit, quitters never win. I want to redefine that for the lifestyle entrepreneur. Winners quit. Winners quit all the time. Losers, however, are afraid to quit. Winners know when to quit what works and what doesn't work. So The key here is about quitting, knowing when to quit what doesn't work. And the key to this is saying no. Now, we as entrepreneurs tend to get drilled with this idea of saying yes to everything. 
We become yes men, yes to every meeting, yes to every opportunity, every customer. And then we get overstretched. We don't have any time to grow the business. You know, I get entrepreneurs telling me I'm doing the kind of wrong, I'm doing the wrong kind of work. You know, they end up working for a client. The client just keeps telling them what to do and it's not a fun project to be working on. It's not the kind of thing that they went into business to do. And the reason is, is because they're saying yes to everything and not saying no. You need to say no if you want to grow. So let's have a look at the science of quitting. And I want to borrow Stephen Covey's time quadrant for this. And this is from the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And what he does is Stephen Covey takes all the tasks. So if you take all your tasks during a week, if you write down all your tasks on a piece of paper and you split these, so you write down all your tasks on a piece of paper, that could be everything from going to a meeting, making a phone call, updating your WordPress website, updating social media, cleaning the office, whatever. And you write down all the tasks that you engage in on a week. And next to each task, you write down urgent or non-urgent. So is this task urgent or non-urgent? So you assign urgent or non-urgent to each task. And when you've done that, you go back through the list. And next to each one, now you also write important or unimportant. So what you've now got is a list of all your tasks for the week and assigned next to each task is one of four categories. One, urgent and important. Two, not urgent and important. Three, urgent and unimportant. Four, non-urgent and unimportant. And you can break this down into a quadrant, the Covey time quadrant. And you put all your tasks in one of those four boxes. And what does this tell us? Well, actually, we spend most of our time in the urgent and important quadrant. This is where we spend the beginning of the day to the day, you know, till we finish at night. And what it is, is this is the firefighting quadrant. This is the quadrant where we start on the back foot and we address other people's agendas. So something needs to be done right away. It needs to be done yesterday. And it ends up taking up a lot of our time. Stephen Covey says, however, if you want to grow, you have to move out of that quadrant into the urgent sorry, the non-urgent and important quadrant. So this is, the t- this is the quadrant of planning, of creativity. One hour here is worth 10 hours elsewhere. The problem is, the challenge, I should say, facing us entrepreneurs, is all the other stuff, all the other three quadrants taking up our time. So how do you spend more time on important and non-urgent tasks? You don't get there by working harder, for sure. You don't get there by saying yes. You have to look at elimination. And for this, I'll borrow from Tim Ferriss' four-hour work week. Now, in Tim Ferriss' four-hour work week, he talks about the four factors to define a lifestyle business. D-E-A-L, deal. D for define, E for eliminate, A for automate, L for liberate. And... What that means is you look at a task, let's take the elimination part and the automation part. You look at a task and the first question you should be saying about a task is, do I need this? If not, delete it. If it's just an incremental or marginal value add to your business, delete it. If you can't delete it, automate it. If you can't automate it, outsource it. So, This is key to eliminating the noise from those other three quadrants. And that starts with the simple act of saying no. And we come back to this idea, I mentioned it earlier, say no to grow. What does that mean? Well, we by default are yes people. We chase every customer, we go to every meetup, we go to every meeting. However, it's a lot easier, a lot more effective to say no as your default. Your default response to every request, every meeting, every phone call, every project, every idea should be no. And you might think, well, if I do that, then nothing will come my way. Well, it will for two reasons. Firstly, every no creates space for you to say a big yes to the right things. 
because there will be big yeses. And the people who are persistent, the ideas that really are burning inside you, the ideas that won't lay down, that won't take a no for an answer, they're the ones that you need to commit more of your time to. But you have to have space to be able to do that. And that comes from saying no to all the other stuff. So guard your time fiercely. Say no to requests. And this works with other people as it does your own time. So when you start the morning, rather than check your email or Facebook, because email and Facebook immediately puts you into that important and urgent quadrant because you're dealing with other people's agendas. You got this email, you got to do this right now. It's overdue or this thing's broken or that needs doing. Rather than check those first in the morning, what I do is I open a notebook, blank piece of paper, and I write down the three things that I want to achieve today. That's my important and non-urgent quadrant, planning. Because 10 minutes doing that is worth several hours for the rest of the day. You know, again, it's like flying that plane. You spend 95, 90% of your time off course. Those 10 minutes writing down what I want to achieve today brings me back on course. You know, you get buffeted by the winds of circumstance, you know, the current events. You get pulled away from your destination. And simply writing down the three things that I want to achieve today helps me bring my trajectory back on course. And then what I do for the next 10 minutes I write down my schedule for today on a piece of paper. I've got it also on my Google Calendar as well as in my Evernote. But simply writing it down, it commits it to my subconscious and it makes it happen. That whole process of writing it down in the analog format is a great way of you reminding yourself how your day is going to go. That planning quadrant is worth so much more than all the other quadrants added together. A simple act. It's a simple discipline. And it starts with saying no, even if it sounds interesting. Whatever it is, the key to growth is to guard your time fiercely. Don't go to meetings, don't watch TV and do something every day that scares you.